Coming up, actress Mary Birdsong joins Ileana in just a minute. Welcome to Popcorn Talk, featuring movie discussion, news, and interviews. Popcorn Talk. We talk movies. And now, it's the I Blame Dennis Hopper podcast, starring Ileana Douglas. Eavesdrop with Ileana as she interviews Hollywood's most prominent players about filmmaking, acting, and what really happens on the set of your favorite flicks and TV shows. Mm-hmm. Well, hello everyone. I'm Ileana Douglas. Welcome to the I Blame Dennis Hopper podcast. I'm here in the studio with my lovely co-host, Tamara Berg. Hi, everybody. Hi there. Hi. It's good to see you. Good to see you, too. Well, we've got a great guest coming up, Mary Birdsong. We're going to talk to her in a bit, but uh, what's going on with you? Um, you know, doing the holiday thing, I'm in the trying holiday. to stay away from the carbs, which, which is like a life no. choice. It works for about two days. <laughs> I'm in the, do you listen to Christmas songs in your car and the radio? No, I don't really. What? I know. I don't. I'm oh my sorry. God, it's my favorite time of year. Do you I'm sing? Like, do you sing? Yeah. yeah. Rocking around Christmas. Really? You bring your cigar and whiskey voice with you, do you? I always, that was always my fantasy to write a Christmas song. Oh, me too. Let's do it together. I, well, you know what actually would be better is a New Year's Eve song. Because there's only two. Oh, there's like, only two. two. <laughs> and then like that pink martini version that's, you know, yeah. snappy. But there needs to be a happier, you know, version of uh, I think we should, should, we should come up with something. Although this this year may not be the, the year <laughs> for a peppy New Year because we're all so Happy depressed. New Year tune. But I love... No, act as if, right? Isn't yeah. that like, right, forward thinking and let's see if we can make ourselves be happy. When I was a little kid... <laughs> Staying with my grandfather, Melvin Douglas, yes. name dropper that I am. Yes, you are. Uh, he had with him uh, the, the, at one of the cocktail parties the writer. He was a songwriter, and he had written um, "Frosty the Snowman." Oh, yeah. And he wrote a couple other Christmas songs too, but "Frosty the Snowman" really was his bread and butter. Claim to fame. Again, that was that was always like ah, just one good Christmas song, and you're you're home free. You, you could, could do, do it, it is the thing. I'm, I'm, it's, it's in my, my it's in my wheelhouse. wheelhouse. That and a goat, a, you know, goat farm. Uh, right. Why are you laughing? These are genuine <laughs> dreams I have. I wanna. I always had <laughs> fantasized. To what are, you know? I would wanna if I gave up show business, right? Which, which you know I've often been asked to do. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Stop. But I would like that. Always was a fantasy of you know move back to Connecticut and have you know make goat ice cream or something. Did you have, didn't you have goats when? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yes. I've come home. Yes. Again. Yes. You don't have any. Do you, what do you? I mean, you're a wonderful cook. You make jewelry. I do. Um, I get bored easily, so I have many things that I do. I yeah. like to call myself a multi potentialite because yeah, it makes it sound fancier than it is. Um, no, I have the dream of like moving to some small town outside of Kansas City. Okay. And you know, becoming just like absolutely nothing. Like having the most boring life ever and not trying to have any ambition of any kind because every day I'm always trying to be so damn ambitious and it's ridiculous. But you need to be well, don't you need to be well oiled, well set up? Yes, to, to then, indeed. Yeah, so that's where the Christmas tune comes in or the New Year's tune comes in. So if I could, if I could like ride onto that coattail there then... Inventing, inventing something. something. Yes, I, I do. I did come up with an invention just the other day that I need to discuss with some oh, people. Yeah. Okay. So we'll. I'll let you know about that one. Um, I wanted to ask you. Sure. Because this is true for Mary as well, who's going to be on in a bit. Yes. But you have worked, as many actors have, on both the stage and the screen, big screen and small screen. Yes. Um. So can you talk about the differences between the media? Are there differences? Oh, absolutely. I mean, you know, the de- I, I, well, I started out do, as a kid doing musical theater right? and uh, worked in a dinner theater. I never made it to the stage, but I was... As I you wrote, can still say you worked in a dinner theater, can't well, you? I worked in a dinner theater. All right, I never made it actually on the stage, but I saw a lot of plays. Uh, and, uh, and then I did do musical theater at the mm-hmm. Harvard Stage Company Youth Theater, we did five years of doing musicals and then went to school and then did off-Broadway and 
um, and then did stand up, which is also a, you know in sketch comedy, which yeah. is. And I think that what's great about that is that you know you really you learn to adapt when something isn't going well, and you really listen to the audience, and you're like, oh, that didn't that didn't go well, or or you have an opportunity every night, like you know Groundhog Day, to kind of like, hmm, that didn't quite work last night. Let's figure out what works about it tonight. So. You, you have, have that, that ability, ability to, you know, you really have to think on, on your feet. Mm-hmm. Um, but I prefer, for me, working in films, when I transitioned from doing, I mean, I, I literally was doing a play, this play called Black Eagles, and we were touring, and we were at uh, the Manhattan Theater Club, which is a beautiful uh, off-Broadway theater in New York. Uh, I was doing Cape Fear at the same time. Oh, wow. So... I I was was doing, uh, you know, and I, but I, once I started doing movies and that was like the biggest part I'd had to date, I was like, oh, movies are, this is great. Like, it it seems so much less stressful, you know, you go to the set and you have all day to work on a scene. Whereas, you know, a theater piece is really, you know, you're out there and you've got two hours and if a scene doesn't go well, that's one of the hardest things is you're three scenes later and you're still killing yourself or Mm, why something didn't go well or uh you know you're you're thinking uh, the whole time it's It's a work work in progress progress. you know you really have to carry everyone you go oh okay he's off tonight whoa he's having a good show you know Mm -hmm. and really get your stamina up to a 10 highly concentrated whereas movies are you know you're only ramped up at a 10 for these little short bursts but well, over the course, course of, like, like you, you, you mentioned, mentioned that, 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 I think it was the Cape Fear scene that you said, it was a 17-hour day, right? The, yeah. One of those big scenes. Stamina. Yeah. But, but again, again you're, you're waiting, waiting, and then you have called call to perform. perform. So and it's not concentrated all at once. No, then, then you go, go back, back to your trailer, trailer they relight, you go back up, you know. And some people prefer theater. I just, then I found years later after having not done theater and then going back and doing, um, uh, a play, a play at Playwrights, Playwrights Horizon. Horizon. I, I had a very, very tough, tough time. time. I was very undisciplined. I wanted, I wanted to, to ad lib, and you know, I like. Wait, it's not like a TV show. We don't get to make up our lines or do. You know, I was. It was. It was challenging. You know, to stay focused and being character. I got very bored very quickly. So, did you not? Do, when you're doing film work, do you do you miss that feedback of an audience of you know, of the, the other elements that are there? You know, it's so funny because growing up, all I cared about, I mean, musical theater was my life. I wanted to be Liza Minnelli. I, that's all I, I just thought musical theater and theater was the way to go. That's all I cared about. That's, you know, all my grandfather thought was important. And it was amazing how once I slipped into doing films, I was like, Eh, theater. I mean, I love watching theater, mm-hmm. but even I'm shocked. I mean, my roommate and I, we'd go to see the Broadway shows. If we couldn't afford it, we'd second act it. You know, we, I mean, we had to see every show. We had the paper and we'd cross out every Broadway play. And I, you know, and, and it, it became, you know, not as um, important once I started, you know, once I got involved in film, mm-hmm. I just started to really prefer uh, doing film. I, I love, I love to go, to go see plays, plays and I would love to, to, to do, do a play, a play. but um, I, if, if, if I had, had my choice, choice like, well, would you rather do a play or a movie? movie? I'd like, oh, movie, hands yes. down. Okay. Just, just I, the experience of doing a movie, movie, I just, I just think, think it's, it satisfies it's every romantic, romantic you know, notion, notion I've, I've, I've ever had. had. And it's permanent, you know, you only, it, right. it's, it's there, there whereas like that's that elusive quality of theater where you you have one night is great, and then you know you have another night that's you know terrible or somebody's out there and I mean my God that pressure of you know we would have people scouting for like a television show and you know you'd have an off night or something wouldn't go well and God there's nothing like the you know that dread of when a play doesn't you know doesn't go well right but. I learned a lot doing stand-up and sketch comedy, again, about the audience, and I'm very fine-tuned. In fact, when I was in acting school, I would often get yelled at for, like, you're not in the scene, you're, you you know, because the audience would laugh, and they'd say, you're you're performing for the audience, and I'd be like, 
Yeah. 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 That's who's watching. watching. That's, That's a good thing. thing. And I'm very attuned, even when I'm doing a movie, I'm, I'm attuned, attuned to everything. everything. What, what is she wearing? wearing? What does the set look like? like? You know, yeah, sometimes, sometimes I get like, why don't you mind your own business and just do your own thing? But I'm very much aware of the whole picture. And that could be because of the experience of doing stage work. It sure. could be. Sure. Because those are all my early influences yeah my mm-hmm. earlier you know but, but listen, listen when i was, was a kid, kid doing um on, on the, the town, town it was crazy i mean we, we would have standing have ovations in the middle of the show because we were kids and we were doing the show and people were astonished like how are they doing these they're just kids mm-hmm. you know we learned these numbers and we we killed ourselves and in many ways i would have to say those were the greatest theatrical experiences i ever had i'll ne- i will never be able to top those experiences i'll never get an audience to stand in the middle of a show can mean can you imagine right so that has stayed with me um you know in comedy i love getting a great laugh like a stand-up or reading or something like that but a play is sometimes you know you're at the mercy of the audience and they come in and they're rustling and they phones ring phones ring and they're having an off night and you know yeah yeah challenge all right well, i'll be curious to see what mary says yeah she's a seasoned performer we let's comedian. Let's, let's bring her let's bring her on shall right, we I'm gonna talk. she's skyping in so in other shows yes. when we've had our guests we've had them um in the studio but mary's um on the other coast today so she's joining us via skype she's shooting time. a pilot in new york that will farrell is producing which is pretty nice. exciting but uh you may know her from her role in the descendants or is Deputy Teresha Kimball in Reno 911. She was recently Hugh Hefner's secretary on Masters of Sex. Oh, nice. That was a pretty saucy, pretty saucy role. Please welcome Mary Birdsong. Yay! You look like Santa's helper. Hello. Hi, Mary. Hi. This is weird because you can see me, but I can't see you. Right. Yes. You know, when I did, they do what they call satellite interviews. And uh, I've, I've done, done those, those, and they're very challenging because that's they can see that's, and you do like a hundred in a day, and you're like you're on with Cincinnati, and they can't. Well, you you, you look good, Mary, and we look, look good too. Good. I'm just gonna say, where where are you? Are you in a what? Are you in a hotel? I, I'm in this fantastic Airbnb. Okay. That is, I I want to like I want to like advertise it for him, but I don't know if he'll get in trouble, so I'm not gonna. Say Okay, yeah. But it's just designed so beautifully, oh, and nice. it's pretty awesome. But yeah, um, yeah, I'm airbnb it, and I just got in, and he was like, he just knocked on the door like, oh, you have to turn the TV on manually. I'm like, I'm doing a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Sir. So, Mary, we were just talking about the idea of having, you know, what are, what are the differences for you between doing stage and film, television, performance. Oh, you mean like pictures? Yeah. The pictures. Motion, motion, motion pictures. pictures. Motion the pictures. Um, <laughs> first of all, I just, I was, I, I almost want to like just listen to you talk because I get why people love this podcast because you're just so entertaining. Oh, thank you. Um, yes. We and, talk movies. Yes, I am a well-seasoned performer. Yeah. Um, you are. You st- yeah, we, we performed together. together. We did. That, that was kind of my fantasy because the whole, yeah, I used to on, do, uh, we, we do, do a show, show called The Living Room Show. show. We, we perform, perform a live variety in a complete, complete stranger's living room in exchange for food. They, they, it's true. Mary did it's it. Back to like medieval times, right? Yeah. Like when people would just wander around and be like, feed me and I'll sing you a song. Yes. I love it. And, but it also harkens back to the days of, you know, uh, Judy Garland sitting around the piano at Gene Kelly's house and performing. And Mary, of course, does. Oh, yes. Judy Garland. So, and she brought the house down. We were at this, uh, the Dolby Mansion. It was like the the son of um, the heir to the Dolby stereo fortune. Wow! And uh, very highfalutin house. We performed in some really great houses. I'm sure you have. But it went over really well. Wow! That was really fun, and you were very funny. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. But, but we again. 
Sorry. So the, the, so the film and stage thing. Yes. yes. Uh, I the one thing like I agreed with a lot. And I think in general, like I love the immediate feedback of performing on stage, and I love the like. Um, the, 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 like I feel like in film, I it, the danger is I'm allowed to think more, mm-hmm. mm. and that's never a good thing with me. Because <laughs> um, I almost feel like when, when I'm good, I don't know why I'm good. Like it's because I don't know what I'm doing, mm-hmm. and that's again probably not typical. But I feel like when I'm going from impulse or instinct or just kind of letting something happen through me. Um, it's usually like nine times out of 10, a better choice than if I'm like, when I say this line, I'm going to do this, you know, yes. that's just a bad news bears. So, and I, and I come from also when I say stage, like I come from improv and sketch background, like you were talking about doing stand up and sketch comedy. Um, and so that it's always so you barely know like what performing space you're in you you can barely get on the stage you gotta like figure out where to put your wig (laughs) like there's so much to distract you from being nervous or neurotic about it or or over planning very much like can we just pull this off not like can we make this good can we just do this at all and i love that sort of like gorilla Mm. style whatever performing um and you have even if it's shitty at least you have control over it to a certain extent like it's just you and the audience like especially right. stand up and you got to get yourself um, out of a jam sometimes you know when things i mean i think one of the toughest things is the the stamina when i did stand up i never was one of those people who yelled at the audience because i came from an acting background like you never broke character my character was a comedian so right I, I just, just and also you're a woman. Like it's, I just think yeah. it's much more unusual for a woman to blame the audience. Um, I when I was worked at I worked as a waitress in stand up clubs for years, and uh, and by and large, like if a guy tanked and he got off stage, she'd be like, "What the fuck is their problem?" And a woman would always, if she had that experience, she'd be like, "I suck. What the uh-huh. wrong with me?" You know, I was like, what is summing that? summing the sexes up in one experience right there. I think that's it. Sorry, men. Mm-hmm. No, it's, and I'm sure there are exceptions, but. Of course. Um, or like, yeah. so Go ahead. I was going to say, or you're on to something, because I remember the night when you were performing and doing the Judy Garland, you don't even know what you're doing, and they start screaming, and you're like, do you, have, have, you know, you can't tweak it, or you just have to kind of go with it, you know? Right. Whatever happens, yeah, just kind of respond to it in character and keep going. And I also live for that. Like, I love, like, when you were talking about kind of going a little batty, doing the same thing over and over again, like, I, too, like, because my background is improv, like, we were encouraged to make up lines. Like, we were writing on a feed. And and even when I finally got to Broadway, my first Broadway show was with Martin Short. And he is the worst culprit of all of, like, making lines up or trying to break people, you know, make people break into laughing. He would just live to like make us crack up. Yes. And try and mess us up. And like, there'd be people in the wings, like Rooks of Schmanskis, like taking his pants down and showing us his penis, like in the middle of a, you know, song. And, um, Great. And, um, That's where we got into show business. Yeah. To have those kind of moments. So then when I, and I remember like, then I'm, I did hairspray after that. And, and I was like, yeah, I'm not going to do that, am I? Like, Mrs. Crab? I don't have to do that. And they're like, yeah, you do. And I was like, that's not funny. Like, <laughs> like, and I didn't say that, you know, point yeah. blank, but I was like, like, I don't know. It, it's I find it really frustrating, the whole notion of, like, commercial theater, that it's frozen at a certain point, yes. that you can't mm. try and make it better if you mm. want to. Um you yeah. Know, otherwise, it's just a machine. It's film. It's you know, what's the point of doing something that's live if you can't adjust it? Or I don't know. Oh, well, I think it's, um, especially when you're funny, you know. And sometimes things die, and you're like, all right, when I go to the desk, it's dying. So I gotta try yeah, something. And you new. know it. And when you know what you when you know there are options to make it better, it's like I know the operation to make your heart pump blood. 
why are you making me give you this other operation that doesn't work? <laughs> like, right. So it, that's so painful to know that you can fix it and like have people hating you when you know you could have them laughing. Yes. Um, so yeah, I have a hard time with the, the repetition and the, you know, over and over and over again. I think any longer than like three months in a play. Oh, you know, it's lethal. I'm, it's I'm just praying for shit to fall apart or fall down. Uh, I remember I did this like Elaine May off-Broadway play with your friend Jeannie Berlin. Oh, the best. The best. We love Je Jeannie How Berlin. Yes. Now she's on that uh, big show. I know, I the, the big, big HBO, HBO show. show. Or, yeah. you, you, which, which I, I can never remember the title. Into the Night? I think that's no. a, that night or, oh God. That's it's a wonderful show, show with John Turturro and, and we can't think of the yeah. name of it. But night we were in the, the night of. Thank you, John, I knew you. Thank, thank you, John. You. Sorry. <laughs> So we were we were in the play, yeah. and I remember one night I was in the middle of a scene, and I was just like, "Somebody just kill me right now! I'm just so bored with myself." And uh, this big, huge potted plant that was in my character's apartment just fell over in the middle of a scene, and you know, and I don't know what I said. I said something like, "Oh, I guess I should water it more," or something like. That. Uh, it probably wasn't that, but I was just like, "Oh, thank God!" Um, yeah. Or something new happened. But, yeah. What, what was that like working with Elaine May? I mean... Oh, it was fantastic. It was so great. I'm putting my hat back on. I like myself better with my hat on. You do? Yeah. Um, you have such a... It's like we don't get the chance to wear this stuff in L.A. That's why I wanted no, to wear it. I know. It's to be like, it's winter! Didn't Elizabeth Taylor have a hat like that in Ash Wednesday? There's the Any Wednesday? I feel like it's a Elizabeth Taylor. It does look very glamorous on you. Yeah, it does. It just you need... I feel like I'm doing the podcast from a ski lodge. <laughs> yes, indeed. You need a hot toddy. Uh huh. <laughs> the uh, you know, so we always we always start the show off by asking people. We're doing it a little later into the broadcast, but um, by asking people if they remember the first film that they ever saw. Do you remember the first movie you saw? I I just was watching the Wayne Fetterman mm -hmm. podcast, and I heard you guys talking about that on the podcast. So I was like, oh, what was it? <laughs> and I'm pretty, at first I thought it was Poseidon Adventure. No. Then I thought it was Alien. Oh. Not true. And then I realized it was Pippi Longstocking. Oh. Nice. Perfect. On a field trip. Pippi. <laughs> Perfect. So it feels like. What school takes kids to the movies on a field trip? How great is that? <laughs> and I remember this little boy, I can't remember his name, but he cried. And so then he got really embarrassed because people were making fun of him because he cried and he got afraid. And then I think he peed his pants. Aww. That's to, to me and that... now we're married. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's a great movie going experience. He hit all the emotions. <laughs> Yes, it did. I laughed, I cried, I peed. <laughs> <laughs> so, how, I mean, the, uh, I, so I love that idea. Uh, Pippi Longstocking was uh, great. I used to, I read all the books. I was really, mm. she was great. Crazy she, Swede. And I remember being, like, scared. Like, I'm sure if I watched yes. it now, it would be kind of creepy and it scary is. in the 1970s yeah. way. It is. Absolutely. For yeah. sure. Just with her whole look and uh she used to be very mischievous in kind of a mean way mm -hmm. i think so yeah I think she was kind of like huck finn tom sawyer yeah but a girl i don't know i just remember being sort of dark yes yeah we were in a movie theater mary <laughs> um. <laughs> and i love that it was on a field trip well I, you know it's so so that's the thing that made you want to become an actor right Yes, so I wanted to make little boys pee their pants. <laughs> we, we've got it all covered. And then, so then you said you saw the, what was seeing the Poseidon adventure like? Oh. I mean, that's like it was a grown up movie. Huh? That was like a real grown up movie with big stars. That would be the kind of movie my grandmother would take me to, you know, at Radio City. Like when I, I'd get a special. I don't remember where we were. I don't know what year it came out. I remember I was young. But I remember there being like lines around the block. Mm -hmm. And even if there weren't lines on the block that night, that's how I remember it or I remember hearing about it. And to me, that was like, oh my God. 
Yeah. yeah. Like, that's incredible. This is important. And, <laughs> and I almost felt like we were going to see the actual movie stars there. Yeah. Which, oh. which we weren't. But I just, I was obsessed with the song when the girl sings, <laughs> There's got to be a morning after. I would not stop singing that song. I sang it all around the house. I still sing it. Me too. It won the Academy Award. Did you know yes, that it, it did? Susan the, Blakely, is that what you said? Won the Academy Award. Yes, it did. Oh, I loved that song. I was yeah, obsessed with that Maureen song too, Maureen. Yeah. Yeah. I think she overdubbed, though. Got it. Oh, really? Because didn't the girl who had, like, shorts that kept coming off, didn't she? Wasn't she the one who sang it? <laughs> Carol Lindley? Oh, okay. Yeah. Carol Lindley. <laughs> Carol Lindley. Who, yeah. Did, so, Mary, I... I, I Carol, my Carol Lindley story was that, oh my God, I was doing this terrible movie. You know, I can set the script. It's awful. They want to pay you this amount of money. Okay, I'll do it. It's brilliant. And uh, I go to do it, and I'm in a scene with John C. McGinley. You know him, the actor? Anyway, there's an extra in the scene, an extra. Her job was like she was in the background. She was, we're supposed no. to run through her house. He, he and I are married, and we were having a fight, and we run through her house in the Hollywood Hills, and the person they hired as an extra was Carol Lindley. Oh. No! Yeah, it was really, oh. it was really upsetting to me. Oh, my God. I know. It was a very sobering experience. Not that she's sad or that it was sad, she, she was, was doing, doing it to get her health insurance. insurance. Like, like she needed, you know, she just needed, oh, she needed a couple more hours. She needed a little bit of time to get her health insurance. And wow. uh, we, we talked, talked, I like, said, oh, I'm such a fan of yours and under the onion that tree. That is horrifying. I know, I know. So sorry to be a downer, but Carol Lindley was in the movie. And of course, Gene Hackman, you know, I think gives, like, he gives it. What was so great about Gene Hackman in The Towering Inferno is that he gives it a gravitas, you know, that... He does. It's like, well, Gene Hackman's in it. Yeah. So this, this is respectable. I should, I can like this. Yeah. It holds up. And he was like, he played like the cool priest, right? Yeah. In, the, in Poseidon Adventure. Yeah. The hip priest. Yeah. Like the groovy priest. Yeah. Yes. And you kind of wanted him and Carol Lindley to get together. Totally. But you knew he's yeah. a priest. You knew they were. And weren't. everybody's going to die. But or he not. was really great. Or not. Ernest Borgnine, Shelley, Shelley Winters. Winters. <sighs> Red Buttons, who also won the did, Academy Award, didn't he? I just he? did a, um, a musical, you probably heard of it, Seth Rudetsky and Jack Plotnick wrote it called uh, Disaster. Uh-huh. I did Jack and Plotnick sort of from... And it's the pastiche oh. of all of those. Oh, uh, fantastic. Yeah, they were fun. I, I, I but, but Towering Inferno is the first and the best, I think. Yeah. Oh my God. The Towering Inferno is pretty good too, but. I love disaster. I'm, I'm good in a crisis, so I love, I love disasters. Okay. <laughs> we sang, uh, we sang uh, the theme to Poseidon Adventure on, on the cruise last year. We did a oh. salute, I, or because of the living room show. They were fans of the living room show, so we organized a sing along. We did Oscar winning songs, and we did that one. But it re- that's a great song that holds it. It is a great song. It's, you know, there's the, that one. There's, you know, there's, there's got good. to be morning after. Morning after. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that one. Yeah. It's, it's a, a good, good song to sing when you're a kid. You can it feel is. like. Oh, it's a cruise. Right up. <laughs> no, no, true. Not on a cruise. <laughs> yeah. You're singing the name of the Poseidon Adventure on a cruise? I would not go on a cruise. Really? I, how come? I'm, I'm, so, I'm so pro cruise. I've been on four cruises. I am so, and I grew up on the ocean. I grew up on a beach, like. Um, what beach? Where did Long you Beach Island, Island, New Jersey, Jersey apparently. apparently. Oh, from. Yes. We do research. Which, you know, after Hurricane Sandy is like barely there, uh. but. But the idea of a cruise. Yeah. Like that if something go and like. There was this one year where it was like there were three cruises in a row where it was like people walking through shit on the you know Carnival Cruise Line. And, right. And it just the idea of of sinking, or I think it's maybe it is beside an adventure. Maybe yeah. It's just that like influence that I was like hell no. Well, I always had this theory that you know when you're young, your brain is wet cement, so these images that get in kind of become 
you can't tell if they're real memories or yeah jaws i mean i still uh, yeah. you know and again like grew up swimming in the ocean um it, where there aren't any sharks like in the northeast you know new jersey yeah but i still have that like no matter how illogical it is i'm still like well but maybe no i know, you know that was so i have, a, I have an equal but opposite illogic in that I grew up a swimmer, like competitive swimmer, and still and still do swim. Um, and so I think if there's going to be a disaster, of course I'm going to be able to swim away from it. If a, if a shark comes at me, of course I'm going to be able to, which is absolutely not logical either. Right. But but it gives me my confidence. Of course I can take care of that. Well, not if you get hit over the head by a deck chair and are unconscious. Yeah. No, it'll be fine. I can swim. I want to examine this fear of desk chairs. <laughs> That would be a great a disaster movie called Deck Chairs. Deck Chairs. I have to say that when we were on the cruise, you never you you feel very safe. Mm-hmm. They're like only it's only late at night. You do. Well, <laughs> no. When I when you go back to your room and you've had a few drinks, you and you realize that the whole outside, you know, you have a veranda. And that's that's completely completely open. open. Mm -hmm. And that always, that's That's the part part that scares me. I go, you know, I could trip. That's because because you watch Dateline on Friday night sometimes. Yeah, yeah, because I'm obsessed with Dateline. Yeah. So I would never bring anyone back to my room. No, because you never know who might throw who else off of the veranda. I know. But that gets me nervous. Like, I'd fall off and that nobody would no, yeah, I well, I, I have the worst, worst fear, fear, like that nobody would care. <laughs> be like, how long? How long? How long? Be like, I knocked on Eliana's door. She's probably sleeping in. Forget it. And then it would. Like, how long would it take them to? Re- That's my only thought. Not death or that of my dog. I go. How long would it take them? How much do they care? Yeah. How much do they care? Oh my gosh. Well, it's like when I was a kid, I would run away. Did you ever run away as a kid? I would run away all the time. You know, I don't think I did. I was oh my god. I was like running further inside. Like, <laughs> I was such a sociophobe even then that I was like, no, ah, that's, that's the outside world is scary. Oh, well, so you I, would run away and no one would notice? Yeah, I would I used, I used to run. Talk, you know what I mean? I would run away. And then we had, we lived in, there was like a pine forest and I'd run away and then I'd climb up on the tree and then wait to hear them frantically looking for me and they never would. So I would always be up in the tree and my father would be say something like, it serves her right, you know, like it'll serve her right. You know, she should have something scary happen. That'll serve, that'll show her. And I'd be up in the tree going, thanks dad, once again. Mom, my mom would always want to go look for me and my father would squelch it. I, would, I saw it in action. She wanted to, she wanted to be mother. No, she should have been out there with a flashlight and hound dogs. No, I was, and then once I was up in the tree and then once I heard my father, like he convinced my mother, like, you know, to teach me a lesson not to go look for me. Then I'd really, then I'd, I'd dig in deep and I'd go find a neighbor and like go, go stay at the neighbor. Nice. Yeah. That, that would make me want to be like, oh yeah? Yeah. Oh yeah, good for me? <laughs> okay, I'm in Taiwan now, Dad. Exactly. <laughs> never going to talk to you again. Never coming back. That's funny. Oh well. I showed, I showed them, but I did, I would get do the whole, you know, Get the like, like in a, a movie, movie, you know. I, th- I always thought everything was like a movie. You get two steps, you know, and then of course your parents would come. Why would you think? Yeah. To come after you, and it would never happen. I remember like also being on the playground, and we were playing soccer, and one of the boys like you know shoved me or something, and I did one of these like because I saw it in a movie. I said I've seen this a million times. Like I'm gonna get all these points. And it points works every time. Where you're like, hey, you want to fight about it? And then the teacher goes, all right, now you two, come on, break it up, break it up. And I was like, you want to fight about it? And the kid goes, yeah. He just like punched me right in the eye. Boom. I like I landed on the ground, black eye. Uh, no, no one broke it up. No one. There was like, Ileana just threatened Danny. Blah blah blah. You know. Next thing, we're both hauled off to the principal's office. I've got the black eye. She started it. He was the victim. Nobody cared. And no. And once again. Nobody cared, but what are you gonna do? Yeah, those are mine. Later on, he. You still do that? Do you just like challenge grown men? 
Oh God! Well, that's that's like part of growing up on a commune. I think, and we were so we were such social outcasts. I couldn't ride on the school bus because the school bus driver, uh, I would get on the bus and he'd say, "I, you know, they open the door, you know, that thing," and he'd be sitting there. Yeah, and he would give me a dirty look, and I'd be like, "Oh God!" And I'd have to get, I'd walk up those big steps, and then right as I was passing him, he'd go, "Dirty hippie." Oh. I know. So it was like, I, you know, and then uh, I got a lot of Pocahontas because, like, we were hippies and I had the, the braids and stuff. Did you, oh. Ilya, did you yeah. get his license number and his tag number? <laughs> no, I didn't. That's why I was like, I would like to talk to his supervisor. Well, I did. I developed, so I developed this lifelong thing. I don't like bullies. So I don't, I have a, I have a way over the top moral, uh, it, it's to the point that it's, literally irritates people like I've I've gone after people for like that was very rude and why would you do that and I've lectured people I, I once lectured a guy who mugged me it's like a famous <laughs> story I've told it's a true story there used to be in do you remember when you lived in New York do you remember when there used to be a godfather pizza in 42nd street anyway I think so many years ago but I was there with my friend, and you know, were having fun, kidding around. We're gonna go see a play, and you know, this somebody, this guy tried to steal my purse, and it was a miracle. I don't know how, but I, I lunged for him, and he had the purse up his sweatshirt, and I tackled him like as he was trying to go out the door. I literally tackled him, got him with one hand, got my purse back, and then started to lecture him that I only had seven dollars. I was, I was like, like you, you were going to ruin my life for $7. And the guy was like trying to get out. Just Thank like, God he didn't have a weapon. I know, I know. I had a great, you know, moral. Thing. Right, that was the pizza gate of the 80s, sadly. That was, <laughs> right. that was as bad as it got back then. So I'm curious about your stint on Masters of Sex. Yeah, I, I mean, know. who knows? Is she supposed to be potentially, you know, is that potentially recurring? I know, uh, they are. Dangle in front of you, but, I know they are um, but A, I just love anything vintage. So just yes. the fact that I got to wear vintage, you nice. know, cool dresses is great. And I got to kind of play, she's sort of like this Eve Arden in mm -hmm. the old movies. Eve Arden would always be like, let's go get a martini and talk about it. Like, yeah. You know, <laughs> so she's. But she's, there's this real woman who was she, basically Hugh Hefner's, like, work wife. Yeah. Because um, they were together for, like, 50 years. And she was this tough Irish lady who smoked. And um, and so, uh, I yeah, I played Hugh Hefner's personal secretary. And I had these sort of sort of pseudo, like, feminist discussions with, um, with uh, oh, my God, why am I blanking on her name? Because I love her. Lizzie? The, the, yes. Lizzie Kaplan. Yes, I love Lizzie Kaplan. She yes. has so much fun to work with, so down to earth, so funny. Like she's another one that I feel like she's sort of part of the comedy. Yeah, like, she has a comedy she, background. I remember her when she was more like a child. Sketch world, and yet she's and now she's on a very so serious. So she's another one who's walking the slime. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so that was fun. Like we got to sort of goof around in between takes, but again, like. I feel like when I'm doing TV, um, I get I let myself get a little bit intimidated and like will will do like the, the fun stuff that I'll think of or whatever like in between scenes and then like right. yes sir rolling you know um, so I wish I had a little bit more moxie as far as like as my friend Caddy would say swinging my dick. Um, I think, I think it's, it's you know, as an actor these days, I, I feel you have to create it. You have to go on the set and just do it. Because especially a television show that is in a rhythm. Are we on, tw are we on this is uh, episode 13, uh, they got four more, and then, I don't know if it was your experience, but oftentimes now they're shooting multiple episodes at the same time. So like after yeah. you, they're shooting a scene from an episode that they did two weeks ago that they never got to. So it's a little, you know, they're so harried and, and I, it's very hard to come into a, a television show where everybody knows each other and kind of make your mark and stand your ground and like get your time on camera, you know? 
it's uh yeah i mean and especially as a guest actor yeah. Yeah. because you you haven't like built that trust with each other um like you know uh, if you were there from the start and so, so what do you do when you walk on the set like do you do like do you walk do you talk to everyone so I make a nuisance of myself. I literally walk on the set like I'm Jerry Lewis. Hi, everyone. How's everyone doing? How are you, how are you doing? I like to out my business card. Um, <laughs> I go, hi, everyone. Hey, how's it going? How are we all feeling? I know. I'm much more like, oh, that's so I funny. slip into, like, people tend to think I'm like, I'm a good time, like, party gal or something. Uh-huh. Or a bitch. And I'm just such a, like, a wussy, like, shy, uh, sort of polite you know, unless I know people, and then I'm just healthy. Mm-hmm. So, so I tend to you, just you cut out just a, you cut out just, cut out just a little you cut out just, just a, little a little bit on that last statement you made. What was it again? Oh, sorry. I tend to um, lay back a little bit and sort of take the temperature of the room until I feel like I've sort of you know is this a safe place to kind of goof around? Um, it's just hard to know, you know. Yeah. It's very hard, or whether you can ad lib or not. I was recently, I did a stint on Modern Family, and again, I, I, there was that environment like, oh, they're, they're under the gun, they're try, you know, and there was all these things I wanted to do, and I just was like, I'm just gonna do them. I'm just gonna be like, how'd it go? I think you know. Then they, everybody jumped up like, that's great, do this, do that, you know. They added to oh, it, so. But, but I, I feel, feel like, like you have, have to have a thick skin. skin. If somebody, somebody comes up to you and goes, you know what, what don't, don't do that. that. Well, I, you got it, you bet, sir. You know, no, but if you, you don't, don't do it, then like. Yeah, because if you ask, if you ask. Oh, it's terrible. Forget. Yeah, you can't ever ask. You can't. Bad idea. And yeah, so I, I, I do want to try and, and do a little bit more of that. Um, because yeah, I do feel like the way you were talking about with everybody's in such a rush. And it's so, because I almost feel like the technical aspects, uh, not just time-wise, but yeah. even creatively. It's like, are we just like slaves to a bunch of booms and <laughs> plants and white sheets? It just looks like, wait, who's, who is this about? Like, yeah. it's all about this big fucking whiteboard. And, and I wish, like, I feel like, maybe I'm wrong, but I hope that TV and film are, as they get older, because they're still so young, when you think about it, compared to theater, Right. That they'll be less hung up on like, no, it has to look like an exact replica of a kitchen. Mm. Like, who cares? I don't, I don't think, think so. We did an episode where we talked to Larry Karaszewski about film. I said, I love films from the 70s because it's like, guess what? Popeye Doyle's talking and an airplane goes by and he just talks louder. You know? Yeah. Um, Nobody cares. Like, we know it's fake. Especially now. Like, audiences are so much smarter. And with stuff like YouTube and Vine, I feel like the next generation is less hung up on like production values because they're just doing shit out of their living room anyway. Right. Yes. And it's like, is it funny or not? Is is the premise funny? Do you get out on time? Great, you know? And yeah, I just feel like it's it's so precious and like, it's like you're performing neurosurgery instead of like making comedy and goofing around and like yeah. taking risks and fuck you. Film and the- TV people. <laughs> I don't know why I'm so angry at film and TV. Um, no, I, yeah. you sometimes again, like as I said, I just feel like you have to make a statement when you go on the set and set a tone for. Yeah, I'm not going to waste your time, but I'm going to take time to make this better. To you know create something yeah. it's the whole reason we you know we got in because there's to me there's nothing worse i always think the worst thing is to be home and just go god damn it why didn't i do right why didn't i ask for one more take or that in a weird way that's worse because if something goes well everybody's patting you on the back and you know i mean it's, it's glad glad you did it um so yeah yeah it is hard because the technical aspects currently really take over, I'd say, 50 or 60 percent of what you're doing. The actors, you know, they never we never rehearse. And oftentimes, you know, again, you're like, I haven't rehearsed this. I love when they go. Have you ever had this experience where they go, she's walking out the door and you hear someone like you're in the scene and you'll hear like the DP who you don't know because you're guesting on a show. Why is she doing that? Why is she she's walking over? At the set, and you go. I, I actually don't 
we never rehearsed this, and now you're bad-mouthing me in front of everyone. I've had that happen numerous times. She's going over there, and there's no light there. What is she? Why is she doing that? I'm like, because we actually never rehearsed it. We're shooting it right now. Right. And even, and even rehearsing, <laughs> it's basically like, when I think of rehearsal, like in the stage world, it's like, well, let's talk about this relationship and yeah. you know, what does she want in this, blah, 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 what does this mean? And, and you know, in, in TV, it's like, rehearsal is like, so you walk to the counter. <laughs> like, wow, that's heavy, man. You sure the counter? Wow, that, I never thought of that. That is... Genius. Is there a bowl of nuts um, on the counter, though? Is that uh, a big question? Is there a bowl of nuts? Uh, Mary, when you're so you're in a you're shooting a pilot right now. That's what you're doing in New York right now. Yes. Yes, I actually haven't shot it yet. I shoot uh, on the eighth, so I have a fitting tomorrow. But I just I just landed this morning. Here. Oh, that's exciting. So uh, so you're getting to originate this role. So you know, and hopefully. God willing, uh, you know, it'll go on for a very long time. So how, so let's talk about that experience of starting a new role for television and a series that, you know, could potentially live for a long time. Yeah, I'm excited. And, and it's actually really good that I'm doing this podcast because Liana, you're saying things that I need to remember. Um, ah, but yeah, like, you know, like Mary Bird's song was fired. <laughs> no, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. It's not even a funny and joke. And then I'll start a podcast called Exactly. Uh, no, you're gonna do great. You, oh, you gotta get what you have to get. An actor has to get what you want. In a what you have to negotiate, not in a way like you're a pain in the ass, but just well, like. And I think, I think like the director is Adam McKay. McKay, I can never remember how to pronounce his name. Yeah, yeah Adam McKay. But funny, smart guy. Yeah. Like, so I'm not worried, um, really at all. Yeah. Because like. And I don't care, like, give me a line reading, give me, I will, I have no problem getting line readings as long as it is funny or funnier than, than something I would have thought of. If it's better, it's better. Um, I'll take a line reading from a janitor, I don't care. But what I hate is when somebody who is just not good at, so, it's a uh, sorry it's Mary you cut you cut out again you cut it again so what you really can't stand is um when you have to kind of take direction like a, like in theater I've had to take direction from from a stage manager who was a great stage manager but not necessarily you know a comic uh savant you know right and and it's just it's really it's frustrating when they're like hey you know what'll make this really funny uh, if you say the word cheese on the third beat That'll be that you'll get your laugh. Uh, that you'll get your laugh is gross. Yeah. It's gross to hear that. Um, but yes, originating a character is one of my favorite things to do. And it, yeah, it'll be interesting because like on Reno, oh, did I cut out again? No, no, that was me interrupting you. Oh. You were gonna say no, on Reno. But I just remember like, had I known when I started doing Reno 911, like, oh, and the good news is you'll hopefully be able to keep doing this. You know, like I remember Tom Lennon always talking about like, he probably wouldn't have chosen the shorts. <laughs> oh, <laughs> right? That's great. Yeah. That's so funny. Now, you know, what, uh, so, so, wait, so be careful, you know. Speaking of shorts, so when you go do the fitting, is that where the character, do, are, do, are clothes important to you? Oh, yes. But, I mean, in this instance, like, uh, in the pilot episode, I'm only in one scene, and it's, I'm literally being, I'm, I get woken up, awakened, out of bed, in the middle of the night. Right. Under the cover. So, <laughs> you know, I'll be like, I want to wear a turban. <laughs> and I want curtains. Yeah. Um, but I loved what you were saying about the perm, like you were trying to sneak a special hairdo or something in. And you're like, what? Oh, that was fun. I was so um, proud of myself. I was, we, I was, I had my movie within a movie trying to get Barbara Streisand in there. Allison was like, go, turn around now, go back to the trailer. This is not a Barbara Streisand movie. But to me, I'm like, I, it's got to be fun for me and my friends. We can point yeah. out, you know. But, but see, see, as soon as you said that with the bed, bed like, like, see, I'm always thinking, 
like, well, but, but you, you never know. know. See, Mary, you, you can, can get, get there, there and they go, you know what? We thought about it and we're, we're scrapping the bad idea. And we're thinking that maybe you're in the bathroom brushing your teeth, you know, and these things happen all the time. I, that, this happened to me. I was in a movie, I think it was called High School. <laughs> um, otherwise known as medical uses school. Um, no, I was in this movie high school and I was supposed to be, I think in like a, a bedroom. Yeah, I was like almost like a Mrs. Robinson sort of character uh-huh. in a bedroom with like a long robe on. And this high school kid is in my bedroom. Fair enough. I show up the night before, and it's late. It's like 11 o'clock at night, and I have to shoot early the next morning. A script gets slid under my door, and all of a sudden, I'm like an Olympic-level swimmer doing swimming stunts. And in the shower in a bathing suit. Oh. And I was probably like 40 at the time. Like, okay. But, like, I'm no... I'm no Cheryl Teagues, okay? <laughs> yes, well said. I like to keep it topical. Um, and I'm like, so wait a minute, you're going to have a camera closing in on my ass in a bathing suit in the shower? And like, I'm supposed to do swimming stunts? That doesn't even make sense. Luckily, they did have, like, I guess, a swim double, but nobody told me that. I just yeah. the script saying. So, you know, but that's exciting. Okay. Going, going back, back to, to your the negotiating yeah, comment, the, right? Yeah, negotiate. Yeah, yeah you know, I always do the, uh, what, what do you totally do? Totally going to look oh, for that I, on YouTube. I do now. the, uh, oh my oh God, this is so funny, this new bathing suit idea is so great. You know, I'm thinking, I always, you fake out, you fake them out. Yeah. And then you, you just veer. Redirect, redirect to whatever you want them to do. Yeah. You veer in some other crazy direction. Yes. That is that is brilliant, too. And that's something I need to get better at. Oh, my God. Then you go, you know, the only thing that concerns me is, like, with the water. Don't. What if we have to go back and redub this entire scene? Isn't that going to be a problem? And suddenly they're like, you know, she's got a point there. That's a good point. You know what? Let's grab, let's grab the shower. Let's have her back in bed. Yes! <laughs> See, I think I would go with, like, Here's the thing, I have a horrible, I have that werewolf syndrome on my Uh-oh. back of my butt. <laughs> yeah. That's a good one too. Oh my God. That's Which funny. is fine, I just don't know if that's gonna fit like your vision of what she is. And- yeah. So, so we, well, you'll do the fitting, which, you know, you'll come up with your costume, whatever. Now, then when you get to the set, to, to me, the performance begins. I literally begin it once I go to the set. The minute I get out of my car and step into the makeup trailer, I am acting. I am really? No, yeah, I am no longer uh, Ileana Douglas. I'm like, hi, good morning. Who wants to hear some music? Oh, that... Yes, I thought you were saying that you were like in character. In character. No, in right, character. right. Well, in, oh, I'm, in, I'm in movie I'm, character. I'm myself right now. I'm, I'm acting right now. Uh, You're brilliant. If I were myself right now, I would be in sweatpants watching uh, the Smithsonian Channel. <laughs> um, but you know, because they're, you know how it is. You get there, you, they, you, they turn around. They're all, all the way. They're wearing their jackets. Hi, have a seat. I'll be there in a minute. You want any coffee? You know, you're like, oh, life, life is, is so horrible, horrible, isn't it? We're, We're doing a movie. It's like, how could you be so depressed? So I always I feel like I gotta, I'm like, they're gonna bring me down. So I gotta come with. Setting the tone. Yeah. Oh yeah, and my thing too is like, it's both, I'm going to entertain you and yes. make you adore me. Yes. By 8 a.m. No, probably by seven. But also I'm gonna make you think, wow, what a salt of the earth kind of no no funny business no high maintenance girl yeah like i will be like do you want me to put the makeup on myself i don't care you look tired do you want to sit down like i'm just like but like oh it's okay don't but it's okay i don't need makeup it's fine yeah just like so yeah i had that i'm not one of those people who's like no i need a lipstick i know that is two shades darker than, you know, no. 
But I look at people like that and I always admire them, but I wouldn't have the guts to do that in a million years. Like, the, I would rather go to my room, which I've often done, and just said, yeah, this is horrible. I'm rubbing all of this off. I have got way too much makeup on. I told her no contouring. What is she doing? You know, then say, they go, do you like it? And I'm like, it's fantastic. And I just leave. I never... I, I mean, what have you done? Go all fade done away. What have you but done to my face? I'll be afraid I'll get in trouble. Yeah, me too. I'm like, I'm, you know. So I'm a drag queen instead. <laughs> <laughs> Says the woman in the fuzzy hat. <laughs> I really is going to be great. You're going to have a, a wonderful time. You'll have good stories after, uh, after you after you shoot, you know. I'm and then, very excited. And, and it's not like, it, the script is very funny, mm -hmm. but very dark. Uh -huh. Like not, you're, it's not like Anchorman, Step Brothers sort of, right. you know, broad uh, stuff like that. So, yeah, it's pretty interesting. And do you have scenes with Will Ferrell? I only have, no, I don't even think, I don't know if he's in it. Is he in it? You know, I don't know. Oh. Um, but uh, I only have a scene. My only scene is on the on the phone with my son. Oh, I see. So I play this kind of Lady Macbeth, yeah, like poor relation. Mm -hmm. And Mama Rose, kind of like you get in there, mm. you know. Mm -hmm. That'll be. And fun. in the audition tape, I had to put myself on tape, and my boyfriend helped me because um, he's a director. And my cat accidentally came into the shot. Oh, that's and great. And it kind of worked perfectly. So I'm, I'm wondering if they'll give me a cat. That would be great. Oh, oh, yeah. I love that. Having an animal. Yeah. Although multiple takes would be Indeed. would be kind of, you know, kind of tough. Yeah, there I go. Yeah, that's true. Well, Mary, this is, sounds great. This is uh, amazing. Thanks so much for talking to us now, today. But, 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 uh, there's one thing, though. Yeah. We, we, we've been talking about and we're yeah. told about the Judy Garland impression. Yeah. Um, Would you give us a little? Or Liza, you do them both from what I heard. Oh, but I, 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 don't, I don't do very good Liza, you see, because I just do a marvelous. She's got a something that I don't have. God damn it. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I am not Liza. I'm Judy. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> did, Mary, did you see Judy Garland in a terrible movie called I Could Go On Singing? I could go on singing until a cow's came home. <laughs> you did it. That's just what I wanted. I'm it's, not going to be rolled out like some piece of pastry where people can keep taking bites of me. You know, she is. For myself. Okay. For myself alone. <laughs> <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> you know, she improv, you know, most of the movie. These were her oh, yeah. words. You can see Dirk Bogart, her scene partner, like, yes. 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 <laughs> and, yes and, you, and you need to do that. <laughs> He's like terrified. Yes. He's, oh, thank you, Mary. I know. He's, uh, he, I, he's, I'm fascinated. There's a scene with him. He's like, his eyes are going like he's just trying to find some point of reference where he could get one of his lines in while Judy relives her MGM days. Oh, my God. He's like, he's like looking for the strap on the subway car. Yes. <laughs> Oh my God! Uh, I can go on singing. One so plug, gonna go look if you want for more it. Judy, yeah, or more other characters. I'm doing yes. this 365 characters in 365 days um, thing on YouTube. I saw that on your website. So I encourage um, your um, your podcast people Absolutely. to go see it. Your uh, your, your website's, website's marybirdsong.com, and you're on Twitter at marybirdsong as well. Yeah, the website's so out of it needs to be updated but it's but, but, but your stuff's still there i mean we can we can get connected to all of you there so yes. we definitely and youtube is mary birds on youtube nice. so nice. the very funny the very talented mary bird song yes thank you for being with thank us you being with also us. you guys you can buy iliana's book out on paperback now at amazon yes. and at bookstores it's a great read you should buy it like our page on facebook 
And you, you can, can check, check out our, our website, website ilianaspodcast.com. That's right. And like we always say, Mary, everyone's life is a movie with a beginning, a middle, and an end. This is the end of our show. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. And thanks, Thank Mary. You. Have fun Bye. in New York. Bye. Bye. I could go on singing. From producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire Popcorn Talk Network, we would like to thank you for tuning in. For questions or comments, be sure to visit PopcornTalk.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of the Popcorn Talk Network. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of the Popcorn Talk Network or its owners or principals.